Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this channel. This is Dr. Lewis and this is the health and wellness spot. Today I'm going to handle the functions of the liver. Okay? So the liver is a very vital organ in our systems. Okay? So this liver plays very many functions and we cannot exhaust all of them. We have a video, one of our first videos in this channel that we talked shallowly about the functions of the liver. However, today I want to go a little deeper into this function so that you get to understand where we get hepatic hypertension, where we get hepatic encephalopathy, which is a disease that comes with symptoms of uh, craziness or um, uh, psychosis, and that happens as a function, uh, as a failure of the liver. Okay. I also want to talk about jaundice and uh, basically just the functions and how diseases that are related to the liver occur. Okay. So welcome to this channel. And let's jump straight into this video. Now, the liver is located in the right upper quadrant, basically here. So the right upper quadrant is where the liver lies, contrary to the kidneys, which lie a little back. So towards the back, the liver is in the top uh, and the right quadrant. So if you ever feel pain on your right top right side and you're radiating towards the right arm, then you start questioning if your liver is okay because if you some you'll sometimes be surprised if you run a liver function test and get to realize maybe the enzymes of the liver are elevated or there is a mess in your liver basically a fatty liver so we've been talking about fatty livers all the time trying to uh, correct these fatty livers through appropriate dieting basically keto diets and uh, and low carb diets so that we rejuvenate our liver then after we rejuvenate our liver then all the functions of the liver uh and so in the right way so today i will talk about the liver itself so basically the liver is around 1.5 kgs now that takes it to be the biggest organ uh, internally okay so the largest organ in the body is the skin but internally the largest organ has to be the liver so this takes about two percent of your uh, entire body weight and that already tells you it's an organ of importance okay so the liver is supplied by two uh, blood vessels and blood vessel number one which carries nutrients to the liver is what we refer to as the portal vein and the portal vein carries everything from the git so the portal vein carries nutrients that have been absorbed in the stomach remember once you eat food is digested carbohydrates are digested in the mouth uh, protein are digested in the stomach and fat is digested in the intestines so all this carbohydrate is broken down to glucose protein is broken down to amino acids and fat is broken down to uh, free fatty acids and therefore they're absorbed in the intestines or wherever they're absorbed in the gut and therefore they get access to the portal vein and this portal vein carries all these the nutrients blood and all that from the gut from the git from your stomach and the stomach lining all the way to the intestines into the liver okay and this one carries about uh, a thousand ml of blood okay so you can imagine how much blood that is it's a lot of blood and then the liver also has another uh, blood supply which is called the hepatic artery this is the hepatic artery now basically the hepatic artery carries oxygenated blood okay to the liver now this hepatic artery carries about 300 ml of blood now here we've added another one so a thousand plus 300 ml so the liver receives a huge amount of blood which amounts to 1300 ml of blood that is so huge and this blood comes in a lot of it but under low pressure so going into the liver blood comes in under low pressure now blood leaves the liver through another vein that is called the hepatic vein this one this is the hepatic vein now the hepatic vein remember we said there is blood that comes from the liver and goes to the heart so that is through the hepatic vein and this goes and joins the vena cava so basically this is the heart so it joins the vena cava and the vena cava takes it to the heart into the right auricle okay so that is the hepatic circulation from the body into the liver 
metabolism happens and blood is filtered in the liver, then that blood is carried out through the hepatic vein to the vena cava. This is the inferior vena cava, so the one that comes from below the heart. Then goes to the heart, to the right auricle, and the process continues. Okay. So remember, this is the oxygenated blood which is going to the heart to get uh, to, to be pumped into the lungs to get oxygenated. However, that is a story for another day. Good. So basically, that is the structure of uh, uh, the liver. So, as blood comes into the liver, in the liver we have functional units of the liver that are called lobules. So, the lobules. Now, these lobules look like this. They are hexagonal. Okay? So, this is what we call a lobule. And inside the liver we have thousands of these, hundreds of thousands of these lobules. Now, Below every lobule, there are two entrances, one for this, the portal vein, and one for the hepatic artery, okay? So blood gets into the lobules through these two, so they join the lobules. And inside the lobule, let me just draw the structure of the lobule so that you can get to understand. So here is our lobule. And down here, we have the entrance of the hepatic artery. And the other side, we have the entrance of the portal vein. Okay? So this blood comes in, and also this one comes in. Now, in this lobule, we have something that is called sinusoid. So don't worry about the medical terms. Just understand, this one is what we call a sinusoid. Now, the sinusoid takes this blood all the way to the central vein. So this one is our central vein, okay? So now, as it goes through the central vein, remember this sinusoid has spaces. That's why I've indicated it as a dotted line. It has perforations and spaces. And in these perforations, we have cells that are called Kufa cells. Okay? The Kufa cells are basically macrophages and their role is to fight bacteria. So they engulf bacteria that comes as a, as a result of this blood that is coming in and has nutrients. So if you have bacteria that comes in, it will be engulfed by these Kufa cells and they will be destroyed. Again, we have epithelial cells lining this sinusoid. And those epithelial cells and also the hepatic cells, which are called the liver cells. So those liver cells, what they do is just to filter this blood so that as, as it goes through, it comes out clean. So that is the role of the liver that uh, is involved in filtration. So we already started to handle the number one role of the liver, which is filtration. So basically, this is the central unit for filtration. Blood comes in through the, uh, the portal vein and the hepatic artery, goes into sinusoid, then into the central vein. And filtration happens here at the epithelial cells and at the uh, hepatic cells. So now our blood is here. So, so many of these lobules connect uh, the central veins and that is what leaves through the hepatic vein, okay? So this one, all the blood that comes in is filtered through these lobules, then goes out through the hepatic vein to the heart, okay, as clean blood. So that is role number one of filtration. So basically that is uh, uh, understood. And therefore, uh, blood that goes through the heart is already clean and filtered by the liver. So that is the function of the liver. Number one function of the liver is filtration. And then at this part, we also have blood storage. So number one function of the liver, we said, is filtration and storage of blood. Now, we will divide liver functions into four major groups. And these four, we have subunits. So as we discuss, you'll get to tap out the other functions of the liver. But the major ones are these four. Okay. So number one role, we've said, is filtration and blood storage. Now, remember we said the liver receives 1,300 ml of blood from the portal vein and the hepatic artery. 1,300 ml of blood. So all this blood goes to the liver, then leaves the liver towards the heart. Now, this is already a storage form of blood, the 1,300 ml. Now, remember this is going to the heart. So basically, if you have a problem with the heart, maybe the valves are, 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 are tough or hard, a hardening of those valves, and also a problem with the heart. Maybe uh, we have heart failure and, uh, and all these conditions of the heart, okay? Uh, uh, conditions that involve the heart, like myocardial infarction, uh, congestive heart failure, all those. So the heart has a problem. So what happens? Blood starts go coming back from the heart, back into the liver. 
okay so the liver has a capacity of storage for blood normally as 450 ml so remember this 1300 is just passing through the liver filtration and going to the heart but the liver stores up to 450 ml of blood as storage okay now this blood starts coming back from the heart because you have a heart problem and that is where we get hepatic uh, uh, blood pressure okay so this comes back into the heart and the liver is now forced to store up to possibly 1000 ml of blood so this is basically a liter of blood in the liver so you see how much blood the liver stores and how much blood that goes through the liver so that is storage of blood already for uh, for the liver and filtration okay now number two role has to be metabolism now this is where we will concentrate much because meta the liver metabolizes or breaks down drugs toxic products uh, um, heavy metals chemicals so that you stay clean so it cleans up the chemicals in your system binds them to certain proteins so that they can be eliminated in blood also it makes some of them soluble and uh, so that they can go out through either stool or urine so that is the function of the liver detoxification and metabolism now on this metabolism we'll talk about several things we'll talk about blood which is red blood cells we'll talk about carbohydrate metabolism protein and uh, and fat metabolism okay so that you get to understand where the problem comes in okay here we'll talk about all the macronutrients number one being the protein so protein once you ingest protein they are digested or they are broken down in the stomach to give you the functional units which are the amino acids now amino acids will get absorbed into the intestines and get into the portal vein again into the liver once they get into the liver amino acids are uh, converted to uh, basically ammonia okay so the liver detoxifies protein by forming ammonia then this ammonia is converted to uric acid and that is excreted through urine now so these are amino, amino acids into the liver you get to form uh, uh, these amino acids are broken down uh, to form ammonia and this ammonia is taken out of the liver as uric acid then goes to urine and you excrete it out of the body through urine now if you have a problem with the liver that means you will not be able to break down amino acids to give you to give you a, a uric acid that goes out through the urine okay so you'll have an accumulation of maybe ammonia in your system now this ammonia accumulation of ammonia in blood gets access to your brain and this brings you problems that are of psychotic nature meaning you'll experience a coma you'll experience a delusions and somebody might be taken to hospital because of uh, getting mad and yet is a problem of the liver so this condition is what we call hepatic encephalopathy hepatic encephalopathy where the liver is unable to clear ammonia and therefore ammonia accumulates in blood and these people start experiencing symptoms of psychosis okay so that is one now again amino acids can get into the liver and then they get to de uh, they get developed into structural proteins to repair your muscles also enzymes hormones and the rest so one channel is excretion which is detoxification and excretion the, the other one is to put these proteins and amino acid into use so that you get structural proteins and enzymes and hormones okay so that is metabolism of protein <clears throat> number two we have metabolism of carbohydrates what happens during metabolism of carbohydrates you ingest carbohydrates they are broken down in the mouth uh, and, and metabolized by salivary digested by salivary and less enzyme in the mouth then you absorb them once you absorb them they also get into the hepatic uh, the portal vein into the liver now in the liver excess carbohydrates which is remember carbohydrates are absorbed as glucose so this glucose is the one that gets into the liver now the liver has a role in breakdown of this glucose so either to give you atp which is the energy that you require for muscles if at all you are involved in physical activity now the liver also can convert this glucose into the storage form of glucose which is glycogen okay and then stores so the liver stores a huge amount of glycogen now excess of this glucose is converted to fat and then pumped into the fat cells to be stored which means excessive consumption of carbohydrates will get you fat okay and not excessive consumption of fat so you will get fat by consuming excess amounts of carbohydrates and not uh, being involved in a lot of physical activity why because we need this energy for the muscles to work 
Now, an interesting part about uh, glucose metabolism is some of this glucose is stored into the muscles as glycogen. Now, however, the liver is the only uh, organ that can synthesize uh, fat, okay? So the fat has glycogen, but that glycogen can be turned to glucose and it cannot come back into the liver. So the liver sends glucose into the muscles and is stored as glycogen. However, it cannot come back. So muscles do not have that ability to bring back glucose into the system. Again, fat cells. So the liver sends fat into the fat cells, but fat cells cannot synthesize fat on their own. And therefore, the basic organ for synthesis of fat has to be the liver. So how does it do this? The liver combines two things. So fats are broken down to fatty acids. Okay, so the liver combines this with glycerol. And this, these two can either go and form ATP for your energy, so that is utilization, or the two can also come and form triglycerides. Now, this is the storage form of, of fatty acids in your, in your fat tissues. Now, when you go to hospital and you take a, a, a test, a lipid test, Basically, what they are measuring is these triglycerides. And that's why we insist on the ratio of LDL to triglycerides. So if you have high content of triglycerides, then now it's time to start editing your diet. However, if you, have, you just have a high content of cholesterol or the low density lipoprotein, that has no problem. You don't have need to panic already until you take the ratio of that LDL to triglycerides. And if that ratio is high, then you'll start to understand that now it's time to start changing your lifestyle. So basically that is what happens uh, on fat metabolism. Now, the next one, so that is fat. Now the next one is red blood cell breakdown, okay? So the liver breaks down red blood cells. Remember, red blood cells have a, a lifetime of 120 days. So these 120 days, the red blood cells are now broken down to give two components. One is the heme, which is the iron part, and the other one is the globin which is, so remember, red blood cells are formed, are form, uh, they have hemoglobin. So the heme is the iron part, and the globin is the protein part, okay? So understand that. Now, this heme is the one that goes through different channels. So heme, now you've broken down red blood cells. You've gotten your globin and you've gotten your heme. Globin can be recycled because it's a protein, so it can be recycled in the body to form other structural proteins and stuff, okay? But this one is the one that carries iron the iron part is the heme now this heme is converted to something called bilivadin so we convert this to bilivadin okay this is a chemical uh, process of conversion of heme into an excretory product okay and then this bilivadin is then converted to bilirubin so most of you are familiar with bilirubin okay so now this bilirubin is the one that is carried to the liver once it's carried to the river, it's supposed to be broken down or, remember this is unconjugated, meaning it is free. It is not bound to anything that can make it soluble or easy to excrete, to get out of the body. So that's why it is called unconjugated. Now, it is taken to the liver to get conjugated, meaning to get attached to either proteins or other substances that make it either soluble or easy to excrete from the body. Okay, so this bilirubin goes into the liver and is broken down uh, uh, to, uh, inside the liver. Now, assuming you have a liver problem, that means you cannot break down bilirubin because it's broken in. You cannot conjugate bilirubin. And that means bilirubin will start to accumulate in your blood. Once it starts accumulating, then you will have a condition called jaundice, which, means, which will, which will uh, uh, come out as yellow skin or yellow eyes. Okay? So that is the function of the liver, to detoxify red blood cells and heme. That's another good function. Okay? So be careful with your liver because once you, 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 you take care of your liver, then that means you are taking care of uh, uh, jaundice so that it will disappear. Now, once it's taken into the liver, it has been conjugated to form a substance that is easy to excrete, this bilirubin will either go into two channels. One is in the intestines and the other one goes back to uh, basically the intestines so that it goes out uh, as stool. Okay? So it forms stacobilin, which don't worry about the chemical names, just know it goes into the intestines and then gives 
the stool, the brown color. So it is responsible for the brown color of stool. And that is one way it is excreted. The other way is it goes to the kidneys to form urobilinogen. Again, don't worry about the names. So the kidneys excrete it as urine. Now, it's also responsible for the brown color of what? Of urine. So basically, bilirubin, which comes from red blood cells, is the one that gives your stool and your urine the color. I hope that is understood. Now, we've talked about metabolism. So that has been basically fat, uh, protein, <coughs> and uh, carbohydrate metabolism. Now, what about the detox? Because remember, we have metabolism and detox. So detox, in the liver, we have something called xenobiotic metabolism. Now, xenobiotic metabolism is basically breaking down toxic substances and then and excreting them out of the body. So that is the function of the liver. Basically, these are heavy metals. Okay, This is iron. So it binds iron to uh, uh, proteins and then it excretes it the same way it does to him. Okay, Good. Then also uh, uh, products like pesticides, drugs. So the liver has a role in xenobiotic metabolism, which means just breakdown of toxic substances in the body and excreting them out of the body. Number three role of the liver is formation of bile. So basically bile formation. And what is bile? Bile is the substance that is produced in the liver and is stored in an organ that is behind the liver that is called the gallbladder. So bile basically is released into your small intestines to help you break down fat. So if you eat a high lipid uh, a food, then this bile is released from the gallbladder into the small intestine and its role is just to break down uh, this fat into small manageable uh, portions that will be absorbed into the lymphatic system. Remember, fat is not absorbed into the portal vein. Fat is absorbed into the lymphatic system. However, it still gets its way to the liver. So now, in the liver, and then we have the, uh, the scissors that break down this lipid into also smaller portions. So bile is just supposed to sequester or emulsify fat and make it more soluble so that you can absorb it into the lymphatic system. And that is the most important part on fat absorption. And therefore, the misconception that when you eat a fatty meal or your seed oils, you have to take a glass of warm water or hot water to help you dissolve this fat is a lie. So from today, understand that even if you take hot water after eating a fatty meal, that fat will not be dissolved because fat is not soluble in water. It will require bile. Okay. So save that glass of water for another day and just eat fatty meat, specifically high animal fat meat, okay? So your fat will be absorbed in the small intestines. So basically that is the formation of bile. Now, the next role has to be regeneration. Now remember, when we were talking about uh, metabolism, we also mentioned about uh, metabolism of red blood cells, and now we, we forgot something, clotting. So the liver produces clotting factors, the clotting uh, proteins, and these are the ones that will help you uh, have uh, or, or go to through a process of blood clotting when you have a cut the liver will produce these proteins and these proteins will help you to seal that uh, gap so that you don't over bleed so take note of that so the last function of the liver has to be regeneration and two-thirds of the liver which means 70 percent of the liver can regenerate to form a new organ so therefore this tells you how important the liver is because if it actually it can fail 70% and still regenerate. And this regeneration can happen in seven days. And that shows you how important the liver is in this, uh, in our bodies. Now, when you're fasting, the liver will produce glucose from the glycogen that it has stored so that it gives you energy to keep uh, surviving. And then when you eat, then the liver now converts that glucose that you've eaten into glycogen for storage. That is still under metabolism of uh, carbohydrates. So we fail to capture that. But I'm glad we captured it at the end of this video. Now, vitam uh, uh, bile also plays an important role in absorption of vitamin A, D, E, and K. So we've put up a video talking about fat-soluble vitamins, these four, okay, and how they affect the body and all this. Now, these vitamins cannot be absorbed without fat, and animal fat for that matter. So bile then helps you to break down uh, uh, fat and also helps you to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. And we all know the importance of these vitamins. Basically, vitamin A plays a role in vision and also embryo development. Okay, Vitamin D plays a role in calcium and phosphorus and therefore your bone strength. Vitamin E plays a role as an antioxidant in the same same liver as an antioxidant. So it binds to radicals 
and therefore these radicals are easy to eliminate from the body that protects you from cancer that protects you from harmful substances like chemicals pesticides and bad foods and then vitamin k basically is the one that is also involved in clotting so together with clotting proteins vitamin k helps you in blood clotting now this is basically what happens in the liver so these are the functions of the liver and how they are related to different conditions now if you have a problem with the liver you now start to understand where the problem will start happening now you will not have a you will have a serious problem in filtration of blood and therefore bacterial infections and all these sepsis uh, will and so will occur so filtration problem bacterial infections and all these uh, pro problems that occur as uh, as a result of dirty or unclean blood so in quotes and also blood storage we already said that a thousand or of blood can be stored in the liver so you'll have problems in storage of blood again hepatic hypertension okay so that is another problem then number two will be metabolic problems and detox problems which means you'll accumulate toxins in the body and get cancer and all these bad conditions that will affect your health also metabolism so protein metabolism carbohydrates metabolism fat metabolism and vitamin metabolism also even the liver plays also a role in vitamin B uh, uh, metabolism. B vitamin, sorry. So all vitamin Bs are synthesized, are broken down in the liver and for excretion because they are water soluble. So they are also metabolized in the liver. So you'll have a problem with, the, with all the things that occur, the conditions that occur as a result of vitamin B deficiency from B1 and to all the way. And also you'll have a problem with uh, these factors that we said vitamin k problems like clotting so you'll not have uh, you'll not uh, you'll you'll bleed excessively then you'll have a problem with metabolism and, and and excretion of toxins you'll also have a problem in your bones remember vitamin uh, d there is a step that is uh, of synthesis of vitamin d that occurs in the liver so again we put up a video that talks about vitamin d therefore after you watch that video you'll get to understand and relate how vitamin d is formed from the skin to the liver and to the kidneys so you'll have a problem with your bones if you have a problem with the liver again vitamin a that basically means you'll have a problem with vision now i wanted to know again this vitamin a excess of it in the liver can cause liver problems okay so it can cause inflammation of the liver so the liver clears it out of the body so that it doesn't bring problems to the same same liver so basically that is the function of the liver and whatever what will happen if at all uh, you don't protect your liver so protect your liver by all means and how do you protect your liver Number one, keto diets. Basically, high protein and high fat and low carbohydrate diet. Number two, start fasting. So fasting cleans your liver. Okay? Okay. So basically, intermittent fasting and periodic, prolonged periodic fastings. Number three, drop sugar, drop seed oils, the foods that are so inflammatory to the liver. Drop fruits because fruits have fructose and fructose is the number one uh, cause of fatty liver. Also, honey has fructose. So drop all that. Drop processed foods. Okay, because processed foods have chemicals that destroy the liver, the preservatives, and also some of the foods that you eat in the restaurants have MSG, and MSG is highly toxic to the liver. So once you do that and you drop sugar, then you will have no problem with the liver. You will cleanse your liver and the liver will start rejuvenating and it will protect you from all the conditions that arise as a result of a lack or a messed up function.